Hey everyone, I wanted to show you a uh, really quick method on using the Roto Brush tool in Adobe After Effects and also show you a little bit about how we round trip from uh, Adobe Premiere into After Effects and back again. So here I have a clip of uh, these two kids here, uh, my son and his cousin getting ready for a mud run. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate them from the background and uh, through rotoscoping. And rotoscoping is this process of going frame by frame and removing the foreground subject from the background. And if we did that with traditional masks, this could take a long time, and we certainly don't want to do that. And so we're going to use the roto brush tool. So what I'm going to do is here in Premiere, I've already set my in and out points, and I know that this is the clip that I want to use, and it is, oh, it's probably a little longer than I want to use it. Uh, it's about two seconds. Um, I think we can use that two or four seconds. So I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to go down to replace with a After Effects composition. This will launch Adobe After Effects and uh, load this clip into a composition. And so here we are with our composition set up at the uh, right frame rate, the size, all of that good stuff, and we're ready to begin. So I'm just going to go up here and select the Roto Brush tool. And I need to double click on this clip because you can only use the Roto Brush tool inside of a layer control window. And the way this works is you're going to draw um, and tell After Effects what elements are part of the foreground and what elements are part of the background. And what After Effects will do is go through and create a segmentation boundary that will attempt to outline the shape of the subject. Now, unlike traditional rotoscoping where you would want a really fine detail around the edge of your subject with the roto brush tool we're really kind of going at it from a very gross process where we're going to use a really large brush and define the uh, parts of the object that we say are in the foreground and which parts are in the background so i'm just going to go up and begin by setting a rather large brush size we'll start with something like 40 i think and I'm just going to go in and start outlining uh, or going through my subject. So I'm just going to go through. And a, and a good way to think about this is to kind of follow the skeletal structure of your subject. And uh, so I'm just running through head to tail on these, on these kids. And you'll notice that After Effects is starting to select areas outside of this boundary range that I don't want. And that's okay because we're going to now go through, and by holding down the um, Option key, I'm going to go in and select areas that I know are the background of my scene and areas that I don't want to be included in this roto brush. And you can tell I'm just going through it with very big strokes right now. And I can switch back and say, hey, his hair needs to be included. And we see that we do a pretty good job. Here's some areas over here. After Effects does a pretty good job, but now I'm going to zoom in and move around and start removing some of these portions. And what I've done here down in the uh, timeline, you can see this little span region that's been created and a little gold a rectangle that represents the base frame, the starting frame from which all of this rotoscoping is, is going to be done automatically through After Effects. So what I want to do with this base layer is I want to make sure that it is as good as it possibly can be. So I'm going to go through on these frames and try to get this. It doesn't have to be exact, but I want it to be within a pixel of the edge of this object or this subject, or in this case, of the two boys. So here I might want to go through, tighten that up a little bit. And if you don't like something, you can always undo it. I think I'm going to leave it undone for right now. I'm going to go through here and just make sure that a lot of this is kind of cleaned up a little bit. And we can refine this as we go through. And just because his skin tone is so close to that of the car, we may have some other issues going through. And certainly with his hair being as light as it is, we're going to have some issues, especially up here. So um, we'll probably end up having to go in 
and do some refining of our roto brush by using the paint tool later on in this process. But I'm going to try to make this as close as I possibly can as we work through this. I think that'll be okay. That'll be okay. Here's some area that we need to remove. And again, I can make this brush smaller and really get in here and say, hey, I don't want these areas to be selected. And these guys are really excited about going on this mud run. And they should be because kids love to get muddy. But I tell you, at the end of this, as a parent, it was, you are not getting in that car covered in the mess that you were covered in. Because they were quite muddy. So I'm just going to go through and I'm going to refine this as much as I can. And if I make a mistake, I can always undo it. We've got some... There we go. Again, I'm trying to make this... as tight as I possibly can. In this base frame. Oops. And again, you can always undo if you make a mistake. Now we do this because we don't have a green screen. And we obviously do want to try to separate this as much as we possibly can. And I think for our base frame in this example... And realize that uh, other, you know, this is just an example. I think will do pretty good for us. Um, what you'll see is this uh, segmentation boundary is outlined by this magenta color. And if we switch to our matte view, the toggle alpha view, you can see what part is currently um, going to be our matte. And you can certainly tell that our mat is a very hard edged mat. We could go over here to our roto brush and we could adjust our feather amount or our smoothing amount. I know for sure we're going to increase this chatter amount just a, in just a little bit. But this is kind of what we have to deal with when we're defining this mat. This is very, very hard edge. And I'll show you how we can refine this uh, in a little bit. I can also look at this with the um, alpha overlay mode, which if you're familiar with Photoshop, it shows you this where the um, opaque area is in color and the transparent area is uh, red, and that will give you a good idea of what you're looking at. And I can also toggle through this, and by turning on our transparent background, I can see what this looks like uh, completely transparent, and that looks pretty cool. Okay, so the next part is where this becomes extremely tedious. And this is the part that is still faster than traditional rotoscoping, but can still be a real pain in the, uh, in the rear end. We're going to have to go frame by frame and propagate this data and let After Effects prop propagate this data through the clip uh, and allow this segmentation boundary area to kind of extend out. And we can do this by just advancing one frame at a time. Uh, and then make adjustments, and After Effects will adjust both forward and backward in this case. And a couple of keyboard shortcuts that you can use to move forward and backward are the 2 key to move forward a frame, and the 1 key to move backward a frame. So as I start to move through this clip, one frame at a time, I'm going to go through and I'm going to tighten up this, this uh, mask, or this mat, um, just like I was a moment ago. So you can see up here... I need to remove that and try to make that as tight as possible. 
And you'll have better results if your initial start frame, your base frame, was as tight as you could possibly make it. And you can see we still got some edges here. We'll go in here and tighten that up a little bit again. I think we're okay through here. Nothing really stands out as a problem. Maybe fine tuning this head region a little bit more. There we go. And then we're going to continue to do that. So I'm going to step through uh, this rather quickly. And you can watch this in time lapse, but you'll be able to see what I'm doing. One of the things that I can do uh, here to kind of help improve the, the process, and you can see that I'm still having some of the same problems uh, in the same problem areas uh, as I've had throughout the project. So one thing that I can do... Ooh. I'm just going to move back a few frames. If things aren't working out, I can always undo them. I'm going to go under... This looks all okay right here. Here's a little error right here. I'm just going to go over here under the roto brush. Uh, effect here in the effects control panel. And I'm going to change um, my edge detection. Instead of balanced, I'm going to say favor current edges so that as this starts to move forward, it looks at these edges and says, hey, I need to kind of conform this a little bit better. And let's see if we, you can see that those edges are kind of staying in place a little bit better than they were uh, before. and how it's uh, determining what to keep and what to get rid of. One thing that I think uh, is going to throw a lot of people off when they're working with this is areas that have extreme motion blur. And as you can see here, um, the boy's lowering his hand so fast that it gets a little blurred. Do you include that in your capture? That's really up to you, but that's also a very transparent area that you can take care of later with a, um, with a paintbrush tool to clean that up. So that's something you're going to have to determine. And I know as I'm moving through this project, uh, very quickly, that um, there are going to be some problems and issues uh, with this mat overall. And I'm okay with that right now because this is a demonstration. But keep in mind, if you're wanting to get and preserve this fine detail in your project, uh, these are some of the things that you're going to encounter and potentially have problems with. Remember, the other thing, too, this is also not the best because of... Um, skin color of the two boys and the fact that they're up against a car that totally has a lot of the same colors in it. And so that's also kind of screwing this up a little bit. Probably not the best footage to show you an example of, but certainly one that uh, in the end will work for us, at least for demonstration purposes. Okay, once you're done doing all this work, and this by means is, is not the best example of this, uh, just because there's so much going on, and you can create multiple base frames and, and all sorts of uh, stuff right there. I can tell, you know, certainly we need to increase the, um, the chatter quite a bit. I think that will help smooth some things out. 
and we could increase the smoothing amount quite a bit as well. And as we play through this, this looks a little bit better. Certainly doesn't have the craziness that was going on a few moments ago. And it looks much better. The other thing we can do is we can use the uh, brush tool and we can go in and paint frame by frame um, some of the more transparent areas like this boy's hair where it gets really fine. We can go in and address that. Uh, but for the most part, I think for this example, I think we're going to call that good. It doesn't do a great job, but it doesn't do a terrible job either. The one thing that we need to do before we finish out, though, is we don't want any other effect that we apply to this to affect all the work that we've done. So what we need to do is we need to click on this freeze button, and this is going to freeze our entire roto brush uh, that we have set up. And believe me, this is going to save you a lot of pain and hassle uh, later on. We'll let this run through. And then if we want to tweak this even more, we could then go in and do effects like uh, under the matte effect, we can use the refine matte even further. And that's very similar to what we have here. So if we wanted to uh, choke this in a bit, say, oh, I don't know, 10%, and then feather this up to 30%, uh, we might get uh, some different results back here. In our composition window, you can see it's getting a little bit, a little bit weird in those spots. Maybe we can try this without that effect on. And um, you can see what we have here now. Make a real quick RAM preview. And there's some little minor issues as we work through this, but but uh, as you as you work through this. Uh, you'll get a, a flow and a method that works right for you. Just drop this in the background. So depending on what you're doing, you could go in and apply a stroke fact. You could do a bunch of other things uh, to this and come up with something that is just right for you. But, the, you know, overall, this doesn't do a terrible job. And again, with some refinement and taking a little bit more time, you could come up with something that looks really great. And speaking of something that... Uh, can be refined with time. Here's another example of uh, using the roto brush and creating some 3D text in the background. But this was all with the roto brush, same thing, same process. And with a little bit more work, you could probably come up with something like that. I hope this uh, information was. Useful to you. Uh, use the comment section. Let me know. And thank you so much.